Right, I've got to make some gates to replace these. These are coming down. So they're fixed to the prefab garage and to the plastic bay window here, or the porch frame, should I say. It's not good. So I'm going to fix them back here. Get a timber on the wall here. And I've got a post in here. And just to keep that post steady, I'm going to put a header on. Just like this one's got. A little bit higher though. And then they can get the bins in. And still have a gate that opens. That way I mean. I've got to make these as cheap as possible. That's what I've been asked to do. I've got a four inch fence post. I could have got a planed and rounded post, a redwood post, but they're £30. This is 10 quid. I've got some timber to go up the wall because that always rots, some treated timber. And there's a piece of 2x2 to support the header. There's going to be a 4x2 and a 2x2 for the header. And then the gates, they want them to be able to lock. So I'm going to make a frame door with matchboard. A load of matchboard up there. You gotta remember I've got to make these as cheap as possible. So I'm gonna domino the joints, I'm not gonna fan any around mortising and tenon in them. And I could make the gates out of this stuff, but I need inch and a half for the rails. See there? So the matchboard goes on so they come up to the same thickness as the styles that are gonna go down and the header. And it's a little bit soft and the amount of cuts that I'm gonna to make to make a gate and that's where it rots on the joints it's not worth it because that costs more than the PSE stuff plain square edge so the doors I'm just going to blather with clear treatment and they're going to get painted anyway right, I'm just squaring off the building from there to there it's 3 foot Pythagoras 3, 4, 5 so across here Put a five, a four mark across here. I put a four mark. And then from there to there, it's five foot. So that's square. So that's square there. So I mark where I need to cut me all. But because we've got an overhang here. I don't want to get involved in the garage base I'm just going to go to the side here so I'll cut that out dig an hole I haven't bought my floor marking spray so something like that and somebody said on one of my comments that they don't like digging holes because they'll be scared to hit a pipe or a wire pipe should be below frost level so at least a couple of feet down and you can look for evidence. You can find the manhole cover, which I can't find here. Then that gives you a clue as to where the pipes are going to run. So they've got the waste stack there. That probably does that. Same as that, that'll run into that. There's a good chance it doesn't come over here. You never know. But also, this garden goes up by five or six foot from this level there's a chance that the pipes run off in a different direction downhill they're not always below frost level though. I found them just over the, under the surface we've got gas pipe there that can run uphill so that might come this way but same again that should be deep enough for you not to hit it and it's steel there's a chance of you going through that with hand tools same as the armoured cable that feeds the house with the electric. You probably won't go through it with a spade. Scariest one for me is normally when you get to the bottom of a hole and you hit something hard. It could either be a brick or a clay pipe. So as you get down a bit, just take it steady. I can't find the manhole cover here. But looking over at the neighbours, you see they've got a manhole cover in the middle there. So those probably runs in and then down the back of these houses.
I am glad I bought that thing. That's what I've killed my SDS drills quite often, going through concrete like that. And I'm down now, beyond the hardcore, so post all diggers have come out. These ones have got a point, which makes it easier for digging. And try and keep the hole straight as you go down, to let it taper in. Because when you get to the bottom, you'll be in like a little hole. Then you'll have to try and dig it out. It's easier to keep it straight as you go down. Right, that's it. That's about 500 mil deep. Rule of thumb is, whatever's sticking up, you want a third to a quarter in the hole. I'm going close to two metres, so uh, a quarter's 500 mil. Just used the post to flatten out the bottom of the hole. I've undercut it that way a little bit, so there's some concrete going behind it. But I've flattened the bottom off so that I can move it around easy. Just to position it wherever I want. I'll cut it to length, turn it over, cut it to length. Right, that's treated end and that'll have soaked in a little bit. That's where I'm going to cut it off. That's the dirty end where I flattened out the bottom of the hole. And I'm going to put this end in the hole because posts rot off around ground level. It probably won't rot up. Plus this is thick clay, it's soaking down there. It'll be hermetically sealed. I have brought my chop saw, that was a lot less effort than digging my big chop saw out. I put a bit of treatment on that, and that's going in the bottom of the hole. Alright, so that's just holding that temporarily. It's not easy working on your own. And that's level across there now. Sometimes it's easier to work the other way, but I'm trying to work to the roof line. So now I can cut this timber that's going up here. Right, so I've marked that. That's going to get screwed on there. And to mark the wall, it's using one of these. I think it's called French chalk. I always have a dilemma. This tri this timber was 4.8 meters long, so I cut it in half to get it in the van. But that means that I've got one treated end and one sawn end. Do I put the sawn end at the top where rain's going to get into it, or do I put it at the bottom where rain's going to soak up? I could leave it a few a couple of inch off the floor, but it's still sort of humid down there, so. I think I'm going to put treated end down because that always rots down at the bottom there and the top I'll just put loads of treatment on it it'll soak in, it'll soak into the end of the fibres it'll soak into the end grain I'm using these to fix the wall back the sixes coach screws but they're still class as sixes so, brown plugs and a 7mm bit. These ones, I put one already in the top, but these ones are pre drilled just so that the, like I said on my last video, the, the wood isn't bouncing around as you're trying to drill through the wood, but the rest I'll just bang straight through the wood.
like using these because they've got wide head on them. Screws will pull in and maybe maybe they'll pull loose. And because they've got a hexagonal head in the future they might be able to be tightened up or got out actually. I'm trying to go into the brickwork, not into the motor joint. Because this is the bottom, I'll put two fairly close together. I'll get some more in. That's them two at the bottom, like I said. we two at the top. Then I'll put maybe just two more there and two more there. So there'll be ten in this leg. Uh, that's the top piece. I'm going to cut it to that length. Then it'll go up there. And then the bottom will be parallel to the top. Alright, so I put the treated end at that end. I was asked not to come any higher than the garage. I'd have preferred to poke it through a little bit because rain's going to come off the garage there and below would be the same as what it is now so I put all the treated ends at the top there lots of treatment on that end I'm going to put another 2x2 two two underneath just to help stiffen it and then I'm going to put a stretcher across the bottom just to stop the bottom leg moving around and same as that, I'll just put a timber across like I say, just stop it kicking around i put a timber up that back edge so I'm going to have to fill in that gap put a board down there just put a 4 inch board down there and get some concrete in that hole and that thing shorten this job so much with my little drill I might be still digging through that hole put it end up to the brickwork I made a pencil mark up there down here put that up to the brickwork again screw that on and then move my post up to that pencil mark probably put it on this side so I can't get in to get a screw in there now that top timber's on tidy up time just make sure that that's still block get some concrete in there I'm going to mix concrete and pour it in. People quite often comment that you've had some empty bits before. I still like it. So I've already got it back in my yard. Might as well use it up. This 
top layer on, you don't want to poke it too much, otherwise you push all the stones down and what you end up with is like a cement layer at the top. And the stones are there to help the shrinkage. If you push them all down you just end up with a cement layer which might crack. But I'll leave that for a little while while I tidy up and then I'll be able to float it over a little bit more. And really I should leave it an hour or two and then I can scrape it a bit better to shape. But I probably won't be here by then. I'm just going over this a little bit. Still got some tidying up to do but it's gone off a little bit more now. And what I like to do is try and make it slope away from the post so any water running down will run away. Leave that for the moment. Get this rubbish. I cut the top of the bags so that I can reuse them as rubble bags. But I'll probably need some more. Right. That's done. I'm gonna have a cup of tea. I've left my bucket. It's got some water in it, so I'll just be able to wash my float off and just tidy that up. But I'm gonna have a cup of let that dry for a bit more. And nearly twice as much comes out as goes in. What's that all about? Anyway, I'll get that when I come back. I'll go make some gates. I'm going to take this front frame down when I come back.